go ahead and do it. Yasharel, Shalom, Angela Israel, Shalom, um, Keith Oglesby, Shalom, Lily James, Shalom, Shalom, fam. Mark Campbell, Shalom, my key, Patrick Red, Shalom, Errol Brown, Shalom, Brother Tony Green, Shalom, Shalom. Everybody, time to come in. Who else come in? Let's see. Teresa Hutchins, Shalom. Brother Chip Warlaw, Shalom, brother. Pastor Douglas, Shalom. Out of North Carolina, Shalom, my key. Glad to see you feeling better. I enjoyed talking to you on yesterday. I praise you to the Most High. Who allowed you to get up from your bed? Hallelujah. Anna Yah, Yehuda, Shalom. Everybody, somebody give me a thumbs up or a like in the thread if you can hear and see me well. I got my music playing in the background. I hope everybody can hear and see well. Give me a thumbs up in the um, chat to let me know you can hear and see me well. Shalom, Sister Leah Wallace. Tim Lindley, Shalom. Prince Yehuda, Shalom, my key. I've been chiming in on your teachings, man. I've been enjoying it. Keep it up, Aki. Um, Sister Valida, Ask You Hall, Shalom. Hallelujah. All right, thank you, Sister Valida. Solomon Ben Wale for the thumbs up. Um, Yehuda, Abinadab, Shalom. Sister Holly Shotwell, Shalom, Te um, Texas, Shalom, Shalom, how you doing? Hope you and your husband are doing well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother McGlown. Said the sound and the video is awesome, all right, hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. All right. Give about another minute or so. People to come in and then we're gonna get right to it. Hallelujah. Sister Teresa said her video is freezing. Is anybody else freezing? Is anybody else video freezing? Shalom, Sister Debbie King. So brother Malawan coming in right here. That's the sound that you hear. Akeem Malawan. Yahoo. Sorry about that, Teresa Hutchins, that your video is freezing. Um, anybody else freezing? Yeah, anybody else video freezing? Sister Teresa said her video is frozen. Shalom, Israel, Yehuda. Yes, we, we're doing well, too, Holly Shotwell. Thanks for asking. Hallelujah. All right, all praises. So, um, okay. So, y'all doing well, Nathan. Well, hope yours get better, um, Sister Teresa. Everybody else said they're doing good. All praises. So, I'm going to turn the music down now, and we're going to get right into this. All right. All praise to the Most High Yah. That's good right there. So, um, love you too, Brother Chip. Shalom, Michael Spratlin. Okay, today's teaching is called Endure the Consuming Fire. 
We know that Yahuwah is a consuming fire. We even know that um, the prophet Jeremiah said when he tried to be quiet, the word was like fire shut up in his bones. So he had to speak the word of Yahuwah, right? The word of Yahuwah is like fire shut up in your bones. Anybody that um, has spoken the word, right, and has tried to be quiet concerning the word, um, we know that it's a consuming fire. It's consuming fire. It's like fire shut up in your bones, all right? So I see a few more people coming in. Katriel, servant of Yahoo. That's my son's name, Katriel. Hallelujah. Crown of Yahuwah. Um, Selena Smith, Shalom. My wife, Kanisha Scott. Hallelujah. Um, Sister Alicia Quinnell, how you doing? Michael Spratlin, Shalom. All right. So... Yeah, all praise to the Most High. Um, so as I said earlier, Yahoo is a, a consuming fire. Um, we know that in these days, in these times, um, the going can get tough and the tough can get going, right? Um, but we have to stay in the stay in the walk, stay in righteousness, stay in the, the way, the dialect, right? Um, but just understand that Yahuwah is truly a consuming fire. But this fire is to purge out, right? It's to purge out, to renew, to strengthen, right? So we have to endure this consuming fire. For Yahuwah truly is a consuming fire. But this fire is going to purge us. It's going to make us whole. It's going to make us entire and want nothing, right? We're going to be entire and want nothing. Because he wants us in our entirety. Heart, mind, body. Soul strength, right? We have to be a whole burnt offering. A whole burnt offering. Yahushua was a whole burnt offering, right? Yahushua HaMashiach was a whole burnt offering, right? Even Caleb, if you look up the, the name Caleb, it means dog. But it's not dog in the sense of uh, abomination or something that's um, smelly or stank, right? It's dog meaning a dog that follows his master. We know that Caleb was with Joshua, right? Who entered into the promised land in his generation because he was a whole burnt offering, right? The word Caleb also is like a whole burnt offering. He gave his entire self. Yahuwah put him on the altar and consumed him, meaning he proved him. He tried him. Caleb and Joshua, right? That was the only two that entered in, in out of that generation that came out of Mitzrayim with Moshe, right? Because they gave themselves as a whole burnt offering. They endured the consuming fire. And this is where we're at right now. Who can be a whole burnt offering? Like our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, right? So I see um, Tress Alone, Cynthia Johnson, LNL Track, Shalom, shout out to you all on your new music that you're coming out with. Can't wait to hear it. Um, going to let y'all know me and LNL, we worked on this music, uh, on this on a song coming out called Quam Yasharala. Um, can't wait till it come out, brother L. I know you're working hard down there in the panhandle, Florida. Shalom, there go my uh, Reggie Norton, all right? Another Aki. Down by the way of Tampa. Shalom to you. Um, Akmat Sarah. I hope I pronounced your name right. Shalom. Ivan Williams. Um, my brother Mikael Gabar. Shalom to you. All right. So Exodus 3. We're going to begin with Exodus 3. We're dealing with that enduring, the consuming fire. As I said earlier, and I know that everyone knows this, that Yahuwah is a consuming fire. So we're going to look at this. For if Yahuwah is a consuming fire, then we must know that we have to pass through this. We have to pass through this consuming fire. Even Jacob, right, passed through that. He wrestled with Malak Yahuwah. Jacob passed through the consuming fire. He came out with a limp. 
He came out with a limp. Right? Many of us will come out of the consuming fire with scars, bruises, maybe even a limp. Lost loved ones. That's how it goes. Because we have to present ourselves as a whole burnt offering. We have to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. All right? Exodus 3, start with verse 1. Exodus 3, verse 1. Now Moshe kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even in Horeb. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire. In a flame of fire. Out of the midst of a thorn bush. And he looked and behold the thorn bush burned with fire. The thorn bush burned with fire. And the thorn bush was not consumed. And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the thorn bush is not burnt. Right? And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called him out of the midst of the thorn bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not hither. Put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place wherein you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Yaakov. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Mizraim, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, Right? And the, <clears throat> and the, uh, and now there, verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. See, all of this is fire. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people the children of Israel out of Egypt. Right? So, let's look back at this. At the beginning of chapter 3, the writer is telling us that Moses sees a burning bush, but this bush is not consumed by the fire. It is spared from the fire. It is pulled out of the fire. It is Pull out of affliction. It is pulled out of oppression. It is pulled out from its taskmasters. The fire. And Yahuwah says he knows the affliction of his people that are in Egypt. Why? Because he sent the fire. He sent the fire. He knows Who's his? He knows his people are in Egypt. He knows that they are in the house of bondage. He knows the taskmasters that have been set over them. So now he's telling Moses, I have a duty for you. I've seen their affliction. I've seen the furnace of affliction that I put them in by the hands of Pharaoh. Right? Now, they're crying. Now, they are looking towards me. That they may what? Be delivered. Right? That's that 
enduring of the consuming fire. We all have to go through it. Yahuwah has done it. But the question is, who will not be consumed? Because even Moses looked at this burning bush and he was amazed. He was so amazed that the scripture says, and Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the thorn bush is not burnt. That's the same way it is with us who have been scattered to the four corners of the world. When they look upon you, it's amazing that you have not been consumed. It's amazing that you're singing and dancing in the land of your captivity. Why? You have the Ruach HaKodesh. You have been immersed in the water and you have been what? Tested by fire. Many of us are still going through it. Many of us are going through this. Who can endure? You will be a miracle. They're going to look at you and say, wow, these people are in the furnace of affliction, but they're singing. Let's keep going. Exodus 24. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Believe that. Exodus 24. Verse 12 through 18. Exodus 24. Verse 12 through 18. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give you sapphire stones and a Torah and commandments which I have written that you may teach them. And Moshe rose up and his minister Yahusha. And Moshe went up into the mount of Elohim. And he said unto the elders, Tarry you here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Ur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moshe went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yahuwah abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahuwah was like devouring fire. Y'all see that? And the sight of the glory of Yahuwah was like devouring fire. On top of the mount. In the eyes of the children of Israel. There you go again. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. In its glory. It's weighty. It is weighty for us to be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And we're still preaching the Basara. We're still singing and dancing. That is glory. This glory is a devouring fire. If you can't withstand this glory that's coming in these days, it will devour you. The eyes of the children of Israel saw this devouring fire at the top of the mountain, and it was glory. It was weighty. It cannot be explained how weighty you are in this day. If you are in the house of Israel, you're weighty. It is a glory. If you endure this consuming fire, you will have power with Yahuwah. Like Yaakov, Yaakov endured a consuming fire. He 
wrestle with Malak Yahuwah till the break of dawn. So glorious, he received a new name. Israel, the prince, he became a prince of power. Let's keep going. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4, verse 21. Here's another saying of Moses concerning the fire of Yahuwah. Deuteronomy 4, verse 21. Furthermore, Yahuwah was angry with me for your sakes. He's speaking to the house of Israel. He's letting them know that Yahuwah became angry at him for their sakes. Because they built a graven image. And swore that I should not go over the Jordan. And that I should not go in unto the good land. Which Yahuwah Eloheinu gives you for inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan. But you shall go over. And possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves. Lest you forget the covenant of Yahuwah. Which he cut with you. And make you a graven image. Don't do this. Or the likeness of anything. Which Yahuwah has forbidden. For Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Even a jealous Elohim. So right here again. Moses is warning the house of Israel. Don't go in the land. And forget about the most high. For he is a consuming fire. He's jealous towards Israel. That's why we must be on our P's and Q's in this hour. Because Yahuwah is consuming Israel. He is proven Israel. If we can't endure, we're going to build a graven image. Because Yahuwah is a consuming fire. He's burning up all graven images. He's burning up all images that we may be holding on to. This is what Moses is warning Israel. Right here. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12. Turn to the book of Hebrews. We're going to get into this. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, we're going to start with verse 12. Hebrews 12, we're going to start with verse 12. Hebrews 12, verse 12. And it reads, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. So it's encouraged us right here to rise up. Shake the dust off your feet. Shake the weight off of you. That may cause you to stumble. That may cause you not to endure. Anything that makes you weak or feeble. Get rid of it. Hebrews 12 verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Unless you go in a different way. This is not a good time to go in another direction. Stay on the straight path. But let it rather be healed. Verse 
Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see Yahuwah. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of Yahuwah. Lest any root of bitterness spring it up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. This is not a good time to be bitter. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. He's burning all that up. Those things make us feeble. It makes us weak. When we carry those things around, Yahuwah is going to consume those things on the altar. Let's go down to verse 22 Hebrews 12 verse 22 but ye are coming to Mount Zion and into the city of the living Yah the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general and called out assembly of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to Yahuwah the judge of all and to the Ruachs of just man made perfect. We are standing before Malachim. We are standing before the host of heaven. Ministering angels. Ministers of fire. Ministers of flames. That's who we standing before in this hour. And to Yahushua, the mediator of the renewed covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaks better than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaks. For if they escape not who refuse him that spoke on the earth. Much more shall we not escape. If we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I shake not earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yes, once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore are we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved? Let us have grace whereby we may serve Yahuwah acceptably with reverence and in fear of Yahuwah. For our Yahuwah is a consuming fire. For all Yah is a consuming fire. He's going to consume us in this hour. Who will be consumed like the burning bush? But come out not even smelling like smoke. For Yahuwah is going to burn us all up. Who can be a whole burnt offering? Who can be a whole burnt offering? Who can be found without bitterness? Who can be found without hate? Without strife? Without envy? For Yahuwah is a consuming fire. We know that when Cain killed Abel, the blood of Abel cried out, and Cain wore his iniquity. He wore it. He was cast out into a land of vagabonds and fugitives. That's a consuming fire. So how much greater now if our Adonai speaks from heaven? Heaven 
and earth is going to shake. Anything that's not enduring, anything that can't endure, will be moved. Just like Esau. Esau could not endure the fire. He sold his birthright. In every generation, Yahuwah shakes heaven and earth. Just like he did when we was in Egypt. He sent plagues. He killed the firstborn. He disturbed the waters. He sent famines. Anything that was what? Not established was moved. Here it goes again. All the Israel's raising up. They're calling their name by the name of Israel. But yet do we know Yahuwah is going to shake heaven and earth with this movement. He's going to shake heaven and earth. If we are coming out of our graves screaming Yahuwah, we must know that Yahuwah is a consuming fire. He's going to get our heart. He's going to get our mind. He's going to get our soul. He's going to get our strength. It is required of us. It is required that we be a whole burnt offering. A whole burnt offering. I'm talking about a whole burnt offering. Let's keep going. Malachi 4. Malachi 4. Whole burnt offering. For Yahoo is a consuming fire. That's why many people don't come to this wall. They walk away sad. Why? Yahoo is a consuming fire. That's why a lot of your family members don't want to do this. Malachi 4. Start with verse 1. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. See? Yahoo is a consuming fire. And the day that comes shall burn them up. Says Yahuwah Zabot. See that? I'm going to back up again. Malachi 4 Start with verse 1. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day comes shall burn them up. Says Yahuwah Zabot. And it shall lead them neither root nor branch. That means they're going to be moved. They won't be established. Y'all see this. But unto you that fear my name shall the brilliance of righteousness arise with healing wings. And ye shall go forth you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and you shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says Yahuwah Zabot. Remember ye the Torah of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him, in Horeb. We just read that. For all of Israel, which the commandments and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah. What did Elijah deal with? Fire. 
Elijah called down fire. Elijah called down fire. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Believe that. I'm sweating now. I'm sweating trying to get this word out. It's a fire. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming great and dreadful day of Yahuwah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Right? So we know. So we know the Eliyahu, right, called that fire. He came against Jezebel. He came against those host of 50 um, that kept coming to him, telling him to come down from the mountain. He kept calling down fire from heaven. He called down fire against the false prophets of that day. And we know that when Yahukanan came on the scene, Right? He came with fire. Right? Because he said the one that's coming after me is what? Going to baptize you in fire. Yahoo is a consuming fire. Right? And we know Yahukanan was Elijah. So let's keep going. Psalms 21. Brother L said, all families, they know the world, word is real. They cannot come in the light when all they know is darkness. They will be revealed. That's correct. You are fire to them. You are a fire to the wicked. Even now. Even now you are. Psalms 21. Psalms 21, we'll start with verse 8. Your hand shall find out all your enemies. Psalms 21, verse 8. Your hand shall find out all your enemies. Your right hand, that's Mashiach, shall find out those that hate you. See that? That's you. The anointed. The anointing is going to find out who hates Yahuwah. Psalms 21 verse 8. Your hand shall find out all your enemies. Your right hand shall find out those that hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. Yahuwah shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them. The fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall you destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against you. They imagined a mischievous device <coughs> which they are not able to perform. Therefore you shall make them turn their back when you shall make your make ready your arrows upon your streams against the face of them. Be exalted, Yahuwah, in your own strength. So will we sing and praise your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Peter. Second Peter chapter 3.
2 Peter chapter 3. Start at verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, we start at verse 9. Yahuwah is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahuwah will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, shall be burned up. It's fruitless. It's going to be burnt up. It's going to be removed. The wicked will not endure the consuming fire that's coming on the earth. If your heart, if your mind, if your soul, if your strength is not fully given to Yahuwah, going to be burned up. You have to be a whole burnt offering. Yahuwah is long suffering towards us work that we may what? Repent and become a whole burnt offering that he may what? Consume us. Consume us but not be burnt. Therefore we can be a what? A perfect praise. A perfect sacrifice. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all purity of conversation and in the fear of Yahuwah? Then you ain't got to be fearful. You ain't got to be worried. Fear Yahuwah. You don't have to fear the consuming fire that's coming on the earth. It will only purify you. You will be like that bush that Moses saw that was not consumed in the fire. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12. Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of Yahuwah. When all kind of stuff break out in the earth. Like it is now. Like it is now. Blood shed is crazy out here right now. People getting knocked off like crazy. But if you what? If you've been looking for it. To this day, you're going to rejoice because you know Yahuwah has been long suffering. Looking for, we look for this, and hasten until the coming of the day of Yahuwah, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Yahuwah is going to renew the heaven. Renew the earth. He's regenerating things. Purging. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a renewed heavens and a renewed earth wherein dwells righteousness. We look for where we can lay on our couch and don't be bothered by the wicked. 
How many of you can go home and relax without getting in a wrestling match with your cousin Pookie? Or a cussing match with your homeboy Leroy? I don't have to deal with that. This is what you have to eliminate out your life. Because you know Yahuwah is going to burn them up. They're going to... People going to be committing suicide, man. Fear. Anguish. That's the fire. That's the fire. They, won't, they can't sleep. They can't rest. That's the fire. Like Cain. Bearing his own iniquity. He had no rest. He was marked. He was cast out. He was a vagabond. He was a fugitive. He's on the run from the police. He fears man. That's the fire. But the righteous will what? Rest. They'll find rest. That's all it's about. Can you find rest? Through the fire. Can you rest as Yahuwah renews heaven and earth as he purges out the earth for his wickedness? Second Peter chapter 3 Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things. You hear that? I look for that. I don't care if it's my family. I look for the earth to be purged. I look for that. I wait on that every day. So I can get with my brothers and my sisters and praise Yahuwah in peace. That's the problem. People are given to people. People are given to this world. And you're going to be destroyed for that. Because Yahuwah is looking for a whole burnt offering. Totally his. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look, you look for this fire. I'm like, we're going to look at this. We're going to look at some brothers who was about this fire. They look for it. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. That you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That means perfect. That means mature. When this fire comes, like we see it now, you better be mature. You better not be no babe. You better not be scary. When that fire come, right? You got to be found mature without spot, blameless. An account that the long suffering of Yahuwah is salvation. He's long suffering with you. He, you've been waiting. You've been waiting. You've been waiting. You've been waiting for your family to repent. You've been waiting. You've been waiting. You've been getting yourself together. You've been showing them how to prepare for the fire. You've been long suffering because you got the fruits of the Ruach, but they have taken it for nothing. So you should look for them to be destroyed. It ain't like you wish for them to perish, but they're watching you. As they watch Noah build the ark. But they ain't making no move. 
So you know that Yahuwah is a consuming fire? You know he's been long suffering for us work? That's why you've been preparing the ark. So it says, verse 15, in the count that the long suffering of Yahuwah is salvation. It's your salvation. It's my salvation. Even as our beloved brother, Paul or Shaul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Now we're going to deal with that. We're going to look what Shaul writes about these same things. This is what Peter is saying. Peter says, Shaul writes about the fire, the fire, the fire of Yahuwah, the long suffering of Yahuwah, that he may what? Send forth his fire when everything is ripe. When the wicked is ripe. Because Yahuwah the long suffered. He's reigned on the just and the unjust. But when his consuming fire goes out, you should look for it. Peter says, Paul writes about it. According to his wisdom, he writes about the long suffering of Yahuwah and his consuming fire. I'm read it again. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. An account that the long suffering of Yahuwah is salvation. Even as our beloved brother, Shaul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Shaul has written about the long suffering of Yahuwah, which is for salvation. Why does Shaul write on that? Because Shaul was ignorant of Mashiach. Right? He was ignorant of the salvation of Yahuwah. Which is who? Yahusha. Yahusha. So Peter says, Shaul writes in his letters concerning Yahusha. How Yahuwah has long suffered towards his people before he says what? Salvation. Because when we get salvation, or when you get salvation, fire comes. Fire comes right along with it. What did Yahushua come to do? Mother gets daughter. Father gets son. This is what Shaul writes about. <laughs> That's what I wait on. This is what Peter said. Peter says, wait on this. You should be looking diligently for when mother gets daughter. Father gets son. When people start shooting themselves in the head. It's your salvation. It's your deliverance. I know it sounds strange. That's why Peter says he writes things hard to understand. A normal person don't understand that. How does salvation come through somebody being destroyed? How does salvation come through Division. How does salvation come through separation of wheat and tares? Let's keep going. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Yahoo is a consuming fire. 2 Thessalonians. He comes to separate mother and daughter because he wants you. He wants you unto himself. He wants to bring you unto himself. He wants to bring the captives to himself. 
That's what I want to do. I love my Mishpachah. I want to bring my Mishpachah to me. This is why he says, these are my mother, father, sister, and brothers. He's telling you, I want a new mother. I want a new father. Give me a new sister and brother. Watch this. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Now we saw where he said that Shaul often writes about the long suffering of Yahuwah unto salvation. All right. So let's go to First Thessalonians. No, Second Thessalonians chapter one. We started uh, verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 started verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing that Yahuwah to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when Adonai Yahusha shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahuwah Taking vengeance on them that don't know Yahuwah. So it over again. 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1. Verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahuwah. To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled, rest with us when Adonai Yahusha shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not. Yahuwah. And they obey not the good news of our Adonai, Yahushua Mashiach, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahuwah. Do you see that? Everlasting destruction from the presence of of Yahuwah. This is what happened to Cain. Everlasting. Destruction. From the presence. Of Yahuwah. And from the glory. Of his power. And from the glory. Of his power. When he shall come. When he shall come. To be glorified. In the set apart ones. I'm telling you, man, you better get this now. It's going on now. When he shall come, when he shall make a visitation to be glorified in his set apart ones and to be admired and admired in all of them that believe. In that day. Wherefore. Also we pray always. For you. That our Yah. Would count you worthy. Count you worthy. Of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure. 
of his goodness and the work of belief with power. That the name of our Adonai, Yahushua Mashiach, may be glorified in you and ye in him. That may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our Yahuwah and Adonai, Yahushua Mashiach. Shaul is talking about this, this endurance of the consuming fire. He's talking about what Peter was talking about. That he hoped that you be found without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. When these things start happening, what you see happening right now on the earth, when Yahuwah begins to renew heaven and renew earth, when he begins to shake heaven, in earth. Shaul is saying right here. He pray that you won't be moved. He pray that you be like that bush. That Moses saw. That was burning. But was not consumed by the fire. That you may be admired. That you may be admired. In this hour, 2020 and beyond. Shaul said, I pray that you be admired in that day when Yahushua appears with his Malachim. And when he begins to what? Be of great power and glory in his set apart ones. I pray that you be ready. I pray that you get it. Let's keep going. 1 Corinthians. Because it ain't going to stop. Yahoo is a consuming fire. It ain't going to stop. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Start with verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day. See that? For the day. Shall declare it. This is the day. It's been many days. The days of Noah. The days of Moshe. The days of the apostles. The day of 70 AD. Here it is again. It's 2020. It's another day. Every man's work. Shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed. By what? Fire. 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 I said fire. First Corinthians. Read again. Chapter 3. Verse 13 through 17. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Know ye not. That you are the temple. Of Yahuwah. And that the Ruach. Yahuwah. Dwells in you. See the Ruach going to burn you up. The Ruach is Yahuwah. Yahuwah is a spirit. This is what Shahu is saying. Do you not know. That the Ruach. Dwells in you. It's going to do what? Consume you? Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in his bones. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with who? Elohim. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahuwah. 
and that the ruach of Yahuwah dwells in you. So that's automatic fire. That's automatic fire. If any man defile the temple of Yah, him shall Yahuwah destroy. Why? The ruach of Yahuwah dwells in you. Yahuwah is in you. The kingdom is in you. <laughs> He's making it plain right here. This is what Peter was saying. Shaul talks about these things in his letters, but they are hard to understand. He's talking about the fire that shall come upon the earth. He's talking about the long suffering of Yahuwah for salvation. He tried to make it plain to us. He tried to show us that the kingdom is in your mouth. Ruach Yahuwah is in you. So you know you're going to be burnt up if you're playing around. You can't hide. You can't escape the fire. It's in the temple. Didn't they put the sacrifice on the altar at the temple? And didn't the fire come down from heaven and consume the offering? That's me and you now. See? That's me and you. We are a whole burnt offering. If you didn't know. Like our master, Yahusha. So therefore, we must be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. We have to be like the what? The lamb. As he was, so shall we be. As he was in the earth, so shall we be. I'm trying to show you how technical this is. All right? So let's keep going. So we see, if any man defile the temple of Yah, him shall Yahweh destroy, for the temple of Yah is holy. For the temple of Yah is holy. I said the temple is holy. Which temple ye are? You're holy. You're holy. I'm holy. I'm set apart. I'm set apart for the consuming fire. I'm that set apart bush that Moses saw. You're that set apart bush that Moses saw. Yahuwah dwells in you. He's going to set you on fire. Will you be consumed by it? Matthew 3. Let's keep going. Matthew 3. Hallelujah. Matthew 3, verse 7. Matthew 3, verse 7. Now, this is when Yehukanah came on the scene. He's talking about Mashiach. He's talking about the order. Look what he says. Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his immersion, talking about Yehukanah, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who has warned you to flee from the fire, the wrath, the burning vengeance of Yahuwah? You see that? Who warned you? You can't get away. Who warned you about this fire? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that Yah is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth fruit is hewn down and cast where? Into the fire. Cast to the fire. I indeed immerse you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me, he that comes after me, the Ruach that comes, 
Acts chapter 2, when Shavuot fully comes, when that Ruach comes in like a rushing wind, it's going to make you as if you're drunk. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you with the Ruach. Immerse you with the Ruach. Fill you up with the Ruach. He shall immerse you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. Because the Ruach is fire. It came upon them like fire. Like tongues of fire. It fell on them like tongues of fire. Yahoo is a consuming fire. He's such a consuming fire. People would think you crazy and drunk. This is what Yehukanah is explaining. He shall immerse you with Ruach HaKodesh and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable Fire, unquenchable, it ain't stopping, it ain't stopping until he renews heaven and earth, until he prepares a place for the righteous, it ain't stopping, why, because we ain't stopping, doesn't the Ruach HaKodesh dwell in you, in your body? Are you going to stop? Are you going to become faint or weary? Then therefore, the floor is going to be purged. Every time you step on the scene, you're judging. You're like the angels. Let's keep going. Matthew 7, 19. Every tree, every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Right? Let's keep going. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Look at this fire. Let's look at this consuming fire that our brothers, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's look at this fire that they had to be purged with. Like all of us will. Let's look at this fire. Daniel chapter 3. Oh, in verse 13. Now we know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? We know that they were taken in Babylon, right? They, they had to be proved by the king. And we know that Yahuwah was with them. But we also know that, that Yahuwah proved them by fire. He proved them by fire. No doubt about it, right? But they came out mature, perfect, whole. They were a whole burnt offering. They gave themselves wholly, wholly unto the Most High. They did not hold nothing back. They gave themselves entirely to the work of the Most High in the land of their captivity. Don't get it twisted. Let's look at it. Daniel chapter 3, start with verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, 
in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. They brought them before the king. We know that Yahushua said some of you will go before what? Kings, majesties. We know the apostles did the same thing. Many of us have had the opportunity to do the same. What did you do? Did you let the Ruach speak for you? Right? Let's see what they did. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my Elohim, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. It sounds like the Star Spangled Banner, right? Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. And who is the Elohim that shall deliver you out of my hands? So Nebuchadnezzar says, we're going to throw you in the fire. And if your Elohim pull you out of this consuming fire in the land of your captivity, then ye are holy. <laughs> you are holy. That means you are without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. That's what he's telling these guys. So let's look. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our Elohim, whom we serve, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, but if not, see, they understood that they had to what? Be a whole burnt offering anyway. It didn't matter. They knew that they were the temple of Yahuwah that they had to lay themselves on the altar to be proved. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we would not serve your Elohim. We ain't doing that. Nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage or his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now we got to remember that Yahuwah, this is Yahuwah's doing. Yahuwah is pleased that they be what? Crushed in the land of Babylon. I want you to keep that in mind. Yahuwah is pleased with these guys. Don't forget that. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace. Seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Now, why did I say that Yahuwah was pleased with this? Because you got to remember that Yahuwah turned over the kingdom to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar ruled the earth as it was known at that time. So, this is Yahuwah's doing. Don't forget this, Miss Paka. This is how a lot of us fall into trouble. This is how a lot of us fall away because we don't want to endure the fire. Now look at this. Daniel chapter 3 verse 20. So we see that Yahuwah has allowed the fire to be turned up because Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. See, these brothers, they know it's a test from Yahuwah. They know that they must be proven. 
They'll come from the finest stock. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Don't forget it. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, it's urgent, and the fire exceeding hot, the flame of fire slew, slew through those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now remember, as I started off this lesson, Moses saw a burning bush. But it was not consumed. We're seeing the same thing here. We're seeing Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego from Yehuda thrown into the fire by the king's urgent command. And don't forget, most of all, this is Yahuwah's doing. He turned over all the kingdoms to the hands of of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was able to do whatever he desired in his heart, but not against those that were fire retarded. <laughs> Who's fire retarded? Who can endure the consuming fire? It's Yahuwah. Yahuwah is a consuming fire. I'm going to make this plain tonight. So if anyone is going through a fire, pick up your feeble knees. Pick your feeble knees unless you become like Esau and become faint and weary. Let's keep going. The flame of fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. They are a whole burnt offering. They fell down on the altar. They fell down before the Most High. They are crushed. They have become a whole burnt offering in the land of their captivity. Who can do this? <laughs> Who can do this tonight? Who been murmuring, complaining about the fire been turned up seven times by the command of the king. Look at this. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king, astonished and rose up in haste. It's the same astonishment that Moses had when he looked at the burning bush and it wasn't consumed. Even Moses was astonished at a burning bush that was not consumed. Now here's Nebuchadnezzar looking at three men thrown in the fire, but they are not consumed. They are the remnant. They are the remnant out of Babylon. Who's of the remnant? This is what it's about to boil down to. Who's the remnant? It's been boiled down to the remnant. Because the burning, fiery furnace has been turned up seven times by the urgent command of the king. Who's the king of all the earth? Yahuwah Zabahu. Look at this guy. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke. And said unto his counsel, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. They have what? No hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of Elohim. Malak Yahuwah. 
Malach Yahuwah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High, ye servants of the Most High, it's no secret now, you are servants of the Most High, come forth, come out the fire, come forth, and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him, that trusted in him, that trusted in him and have changed the king's word. What? Changed the king's word and yielded their bodies. They yielded their bodies. They became a whole burnt offering. The body of Mashiach. These guys were Mashiach. They yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any Elohim except their own. Except their own LOA. Except their own Aloha. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, in language, we speak anything amiss against the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, destroyed, and the houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is no Elohim that could deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the province of Babylon. Who can be promoted? <laughs> can you even get a promotion on your job? Come on, man. Can you be promoted on your job? Can your job, can your manager, can your boss, man, call you out of the fire and give you a promotion and give you a raise? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they see that the fire, that the fire only perfects you, that you are perfected in the fire? Have they called you out? Have they called you in their office? Let's keep going, man. Zechariah chapter 3. We're about to finish. You better get this. Zechariah 3. Yahoo is a consuming fire. He's trying to see who can be promoted. Who's who can be promoted? That's what it's about. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Zechariah chapter 3. Now watch this promotion. Watch this promotion by fire. Watch this promotion by fire. The book of Zechariah who chapter 3. Verse 1, and he showed me Yahusha, the high priest, standing before the angel of Yahuwah, and Satan standing at the right hand to accuse him. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Yahuwah rebuke you, O Satan, even Yahuwah that has chosen Jerusalem, that has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not this a brand Plucked out of the fire? Zechariah chapter 3. Verse 2. And Yahuwah said unto Satan, Yahuwah rebuke you, O Satan. Even Yahuwah that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? 
This is still Babylon. This is when Yahuwah was giving people a promotion in Babylon. Satan couldn't stop it. These guys had went through the fire. Man, who's ready for a promotion? Verse 3. Now, Yahushua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Promotion, promotion, promotion. And unto him, he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you. And I will clothe you with change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fair turban upon his head. So they set a fair turban upon his head and clothed him with garments. Hallelujah. And the angel of Yahuwah stood by. And the angel of Yahuwah protested against Yahusha, saying, This says Yahuwah Zabo, if you will walk in my ways, and if you would guard my watch, then you shall also judge my house and shall also guard my courts. And I will give you places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Yahusha, the high priest, you and your fellows, you and your brothers that sit before you, for they are men wondered at. They are men admired. That's what Shaul was talking about early. He says what? When Yahusha appears, I pray that you are what? That you are without spot, without wrinkle. That you be what? Admired. So after. In Babylon. In the land of your captivity. Are you admired? And you admire like Yosef was in Egypt? Are you admired like Moses and Aaron when they were in Egypt? Have you been promoted? Let's keep looking, man. Let's keep looking at this. Are you admired like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they would call out the fire? And was told to operate in the king's palace? When Nebuchadnezzar sent out word that anyone that speaks against the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces? That's promotion. That's a change of garments. Let's keep looking. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 6. And the angel of Yahuwah protested against Yahusha saying, this said Yahuwah Zabio, if you will walk in my ways, if you guard my watch, then you shall judge my house and shall also guard my courts. And I will give you places to walk amongst these that stand by. Hear now, O Yahusha, the high priest, you and your fellows, you and your fellows that sit before you, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Yahusha upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graven thereof, says Yahuwah Zavon, and I will remove the iniquity of the land. That's that renewing of heaven and earth. There you go, purging the earth. When these things happen, that fire coming, I will what? I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. In that day, says Yahuwah Zabo, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Right? Brothers are going to start getting together under the fig tree. They're going to start eating breakfast together. They're going to start mid ration together under the fig tree because it's going to be fruitful. Because they survived the fire. So let me meet you under the fig tree. Let me meet you for breakfast. Let's chop it up on the phone. <laughs> Psalm 66. We're about done. Yahoo is a consuming fire. That we may meet under the fig tree. 
to talk about this thing, how we was delivered out of the fire, right? Psalm 66. Psalm 66, verse 8. Psalm 66, verse 8 through 12. How beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity, right? It's like, oh, going down the, down the beard, right, of Aaron, even down to the hem of his garment. It's a beautiful thing. Because they have what? Survive the fire. Psalm 66, verse 8. Oh, bless our Elohim, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holds our soul in life. It suffers not our feet to be moved. For you, O Elohim, have proved us. O Elohim, you have proved us. You have tried us. As silver is tried. How is silver tried? Fire! You brought us into the net. You brought us into captivity. You laid affliction upon our loins. That's deep. It says that you brought us into a net. Yahuwah brought us into a snare. <laughs> Praise his name for bringing us into a net. That he may try us. You brought us into the net. You lay affliction upon our loins. But now we rejoice in it. Hallelujah. You have caused men to ride over our heads. You call men to trap on us. That's deep. Yahuwah calls men to ride on our heads. We went through the fire. Psalm 66, verse 12, you see it? We went through the fire and through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. Wow. That's deep. You have caused men to ride over our heads. You put taskmasters over us. We went through the fire and through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43. Two more. Isaiah 43. Yahuwah has done all these things, for he is a consuming fire. I need you to get that. In case your, in case your heart start to faint in this hour, right? Isaiah 43, right? Let's look at this. Isaiah 43, verse 1 through 7. Isaiah 43, Verse 1 through 7. Now we see what David said. Yahuwah, you have brought us through the fire. You have brought us through the water. But you have brought us to a wealthy place. Why? He tried you. By fire. By water. You've been immersed in water. And you what? You've been tried by the Ruah HaKodesh in fire. You've been baptized in fire in the Ruach. <laughs> That'll take you into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, verse 1 through 7. But now thus says Yahuwah that created you, O Yaakov, and he that formed you. We got to listen to this. O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Sound very possessive, right? You are mine. That sounds like a consuming fire. That sounds like a jealous Elohim. It really does. I'm going to read it again. But now, this says Yahuwah that created you, O Yaakov, and he that formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Very possessive. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, when you walk through the fire, we just, we just shared many examples of that tonight. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the burning bush, it was not consumed. Y'all see all this coming out now. When you walk through the fire, you should not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am Yahuwah, Elohe, the Holy One of Israel. Now he's letting you know who he is. He said you are his. You are mine. Now I'm letting you know who I am. Who possesses you. I'm Yahuwah Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. He's going deep with us now. We know Egypt, you went through the water. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Sheba for you. That's deep. Since you were precious in my sight. This is a jealous Elohim. He has to be a consuming fire. Talking to you like this. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honorable. And I have loved you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore will I give men for you. Take that in. I will give men for you. And people for your life. Say no game. Yahoo is a consuming fire. He's a jealous hell. This is a very possessive passage of scripture right here. Verse 5. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up. <laughs> give up. <laughs> give up. Come out of the fire. Give up. Give up. My code of sheen, give up my priest. The north, give up. That's deep. That's a possessive Elohim. That means he has tried you by the fire. Now he's telling the four corners of the earth to give him up. Bring him out of the fire. Put him in a king's palace. Give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far. Oh, it's happening right now. That's why we coming together on Shabbat. That's why we coming together on the feast days. That's why we coming together from all parts of the world. It's happening right now. This is in the days of Babylon. That's how it happened in Babylon. They came from all over. Nehemiah, Ezra was on the scene. Oh, it's going on again right now as we speak. Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. I said, even everyone that's mine. Even everyone that has went through the fire. Even everyone that has been proven. See, this is the remnant. This is the residue. This is the residue that's left. For I have created him for my glory. What? I've created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Hallelujah. Endure the consuming fire. Yahoo is a consuming fire. He's a jealous Elohim. All praise to the Most High Yah. He has created his coat of sheen for his glory. It is a glorious thing to see a burning bush that's not consumed. It was glorious, so glorious, he told Moses, take the shoes off your feet. This is holy ground. This is holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
Holy, 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 holy. This is a holy day that's going on right now, Mishpaka. This is very, very holy. Who has changed their garments in Babylon with Satan standing right by accusing you? But yet, Yahuwah rebuked Satan? Wow. Yahuwah Zabahot rebuked Satan that you may change your garments in Babylon? And he goes to say, is not this the brand that is plucked out of the fire? You are a brand name now. Those that won't be moved. You are a brand name. You are something to be admired of. This is glory. Heaven and earth shall be shaken. Anything that is not established shall be moved. Anything that's established, if Yahuwah speaks to you like Isaiah 43, calls you his, says that he formed you for his glory, he formed you for fire, you're a bad man right now. You are a blessed woman if you are these. If you are a brand plucked out of the fire, you are admired even by the kings of the earth. Shalom. This is sick.